A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw an angel come down from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the abyss and the heavy chain. He seized the dragon, the ancient serpent, which is the devil or Satan, and tied it up for a thousand years and threw it into the abyss, which he locked over it and sealed so it could no longer lead nations astray until the thousand years are completed. After this, it, was be, it will be released for a short time. Then I saw thrones. Those who sat on them were entrusted with judgment. I also saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast nor its image nor accepted its mark on its forehead or hands. They came to life and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Next I saw a large white throne and one who was sitting on it. The earth and the sky fled from his presence and there was no place for them. I saw the dead, the great and lowly, standing before the throne, and the scrolls were opened. Then another scroll was opened, the book of life. The dead were judged according to their deeds by what was written in the scrolls. The sea gave up its dead. Then death and Hades gave up their dead. All the dead were judged according to their deeds. Then death and Hades were thrown into a pool of fire. This pool of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown in the pool of fire. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former earth and the former heaven had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city in New Jerusalem coming down out of the clouds from God, prepare as a bride adorned for her husband. Verbum Domini. Here God lives among his people. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and a, a swallow a nest in which he puts his young. Your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they who dwell in your house. Continually they praise you. Blessed the men whose strength you are. They go from strength to strength. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Dominos Rabiscum Lexio Sancte Evangelii Segundum Lucum. Jesus told his disciples a parable considering the fig tree and all other trees. When the buds burst open, you see for yourselves and know that summer is now near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Verbum Domini. My brothers and sisters in Christ, one of the things we need to understand about Revelation, and I think that this was purposely done, Jesus does not want us to think about the day nor the hour. He wants us to be awake. He wants us to be ready every moment. Stay in the state of grace. Persevere in the state of grace. And so Revelation was very confusing, I think, on purpose. Revelation was written in the 90s, 30 years after the Synoptic Gospels. I think St. John uh, saw already that people were worrying about or thinking about, because of course this is the Gospel of Luke, thinking about uh, the end times, right? Jesus says that, that this generation will not pass away until these things have come to pass. So people were looking for these things, right? And John wrote uh, this revelation, this very confusing book, I think, purposely, so that no one would be able to understand and would stop looking for signs, uh, the end times, uh, you know, these types of things. And, and, and I, I, I've been thinking about this quite a bit, all right? Jesus says, I say to you, 
this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. What is Jesus talking about? Is Jesus talking about the generation of the apostles, the generation of the fathers of the church, uh, the 2,000 a year worth of generations, which was well, 2,000 years of generations. Well, every 25 years is another generation. So you're talking about a lot of generations have passed, right? But there's a point in Scripture that says uh, that uh, we will not, um, we will pay the price, we will, we will uh, uh, pay this price, we will, we will be rewarded, we'll be punished, we will be rendered justice in this generation or the next, right? Uh, this generation is the generation of mankind, of mankind right and that the next generation could be for instance a purgatory or the passing of this generation meaning mankind where uh, the earth uh, the universe no longer uh, exists right uh, and that Jesus does come again Jesus also says all right that when all these things happen when all these signs happen uh, the end will not yet come. Jesus talks about before the end comes. It's right in the uh, right in the first reading today. Before the end comes, before Jesus comes back, there'll be a thousand years of peace. A thousand years of peace. So really, what is the next step? Is the next step all these trials and tribulations, wars and famines and all these things we've had all of these things have we had the thousand years of peace no we have not right so this is very confusing and why are we going to spend our time in this generation why are we going to spend our time waste our time wondering if this is the time if this is the time when we can see two thousand years worth of generations uh, we're thinking the same thing, and nothing came of it. Stay in the state of grace. Stay obedient to all that Jesus taught. The generation that we're in now started with the beginning of mankind, and it will continue until the second coming of Jesus. It will include all the trials and tribulations. Are uh, the trials and tribulations that we experienced already in this life, in this world, in our history. The trials and tribulations that Jesus talks about in Scripture, there's no way of knowing. We will know when the thousand years of peace comes because that will be recognizable, incredibly recognizable. Imagine that thousand years of peace. And then, of course, Satan will then be released again and then a very short time before the second coming where everyone is judged, the living and the dead. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, stop trying to interpret Revelation. Stop trying to interpret the signs in the sky. All right. Uh, we will know truly, truly. Matter of fact, when those signs come, when those final signs come, those of us who are here on earth, and I don't think I will be, I think I'll experience my particular judgment long before the general judgment, but those who are on earth will say, oh, now I get it. Now I get it. All those other signs were meaningless. These are much different. These are far more significant. Uh, so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, today, today is the day of fulfillment. Today is the day of our sanctification. Today is the day that Jesus wants us to live. Today is the day that Jesus gave us to live to the best of our ability. Let's focus on today. Let's focus on being obedient today. Let's focus on doing all things uh, for his praise, honor, and glory today. This is what this generation should be doing. And it's no different than what every generation should have been doing since the time of Christ and every generation should do until Jesus finally comes again. Obedience, obedience, obedience. Loving, humble obedience. 
And of course, when we fall short, we have Christ's mercy to fall back on, never to tremble, never to fear, as long as we're in a state of grace and understanding the importance of Christ's mercy if indeed we fall short or fall out in a state of grace. Let us never abandon the truth intellectually intellectually then we're lost my brothers and sisters in christ all right so my brothers and sisters in christ let us now uh ask our father in heaven to shed his mercy on all of our needs for the catholic